So there is a lot of mis misunderstanding really what gamification is. Um, quite often, and, and in previous, like let's say in the past decade or longer, um, it has been misunderstood, like the, the, and I can say this as a still, let's say certified teacher in a way that um, if you think about the educational games, um, quite often it would happen that teachers are the ones who are asked to make a game. And teachers don't know anything about making games. What is it? Not even necessarily that they play games. So this is really important aspect of who is actually involved in creating gamified solution. Because when it comes to education, for example, are the teachers the right people to do that? Because they're experts in the curriculum and the ways how learning process of a certain subject on a certain you know, level should happen. But do they know how to make it into actually engaging experience? Not really. And this is something where we can see from the various gamified solutions in the, uh, in the previous uh, uh, years in the market that they did not really succeed because kind of wrong people were involved. Um, so, so I will be talking now exactly what it means and how to improve it. Um, but before we go there, I want to ask if anyone here, actually, because I love interacting with, uh, <laughs> with the audience as well, if anyone wants to answer this very simple question, why we play games? Why do people play games? Any kind of games, mobile, PC, console, you name it. Why do you play games? As a child um, or as an adult? Yes, please. Games, games are a way of, of learning information. So just like um, the, the mimicking of our parents in, in, in what they do, like we mimic their um, voice in speaking words, we mimic their actions when we see them. Games are a way of, of practicing um, basic skills in order to get better at them as adults. Thank you for that. Anyone else? A while away time when I play game. I um, do play game maybe when sitting in the bus, traveling, or maybe uh, when sitting in the, when I'm bored, you know. So I just use game to while away time mostly. Yes, that is another. Any other? Uh, why do we play games? Relaxation as well. It relaxes me. I don't Definitely. have to think too much. Definitely. Depends on the game, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, so, yeah, uh, thank you for all the answers. The, first of all, the first answer when it comes to mimicking and learning, actually, that's not about the games. It's play. Play, the difference between play, there's a big difference kind of between what it play is and what the game is. Um, and I can talk about it for days. <laughs> but, uh, but now I will just highlight that, yes, you're totally right. You described what play is. Play used to be, especially in the kind of like, sort of like how we, how through play, we actually learn different skills within the safe environment. Because as, a, as you play, you don't really, you are not in any risk of, kind of even failure is not necessarily taken as a, as, a, as a bad thing. It's just like you learn by doing and therefore that's the play part. But why we really play games is I can tell you from even my, and this is where I fit personally as a, as a hardcore gamer my whole life, is that being away from this reality. So basically stepping into something else that you are not necessarily part or you're experiencing completely different um worlds and pretty much you can uh fulfill different kind of dreams or fantasies in a way that for example you can be a you know space crusade or you can uh go through the you know medieval castles and you can do this like you can do so many things or you can be a farmer you can literally through farm simulator be experience what it is to be a farmer and many other ways so this is kind of where what games do games are basically the, 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 the um, gateway to fulfilling certain dreams or fantasies or trying different stuff. And we game developers, we are the ones who actually create the building blocks for a player to receive that fantasy. Because 
even that we as game developers, we design games in so many ways. And we like, especially like design is very strict in, in, in essence. So what it really means is that when the players play, very often it happens that players do stuff within the game world that we designers never expected. And this is the beautiful thing and the, the dialogue between games and um, and the players, I mean, the game developers and the players, because unlike in movies or any other medium where the there is kind of a monologue from the screen to the viewer, here there is a dialogue between the developer and the user. And this is the beauty of actually creating this sort of um, ongoing relationship and figuring out really what players want, what kind of um, things we need to uh, uh, tackle further to really get the most out of the planned experience. So this is for the, any kind of game. And otherwise, games are incredible teaching tools because you get to, no matter what game we're talking about, mobile, uh, any free-to-play kind of casual game to, you know, hardcore strategy or <laughs> whatever RPG games they are on the different platforms, um, every single game teaches a player rules of what is actually possible in that world per se so rules place what do you do what you're supposed to like where are you going what do you have what kind of abilities and different things you you actually have to achieve these goals and most importantly how we deal with the failure in games failure is kind of like you you, you have this self-motivation to actually get back and do better or maybe they have a different motivations. Uh, some players want to, you know, get better score or beat the score of their friends. But the point is that there is this personal um, drive that you want to get better. While in the real life, when we face failure, we can face a lot of emotional, um, you know, personal, um, let's say, um, uh, kind of moments where, where, where you are not you are not secure in yourself so a lot of insecurity happens um so this is something that where we believe that uh, utilizing game uh design approach within the other aspects of everyday life um from learning as i said healthcare well-being pretty much everything there is a lot of potential that we can actually do to support individual because we as individuals even you now listening to me you might have been having literally a bad day or maybe you didn't sleep enough or maybe you had an awesome day and you can totally focus here but that's the thing you know everything affects us all the time so we learn things differently some are better at doing stuff by hand some by listening some by reading by themselves um, and this is what it's really important to understand that also when you create a gamified solution it should be accessible in any way that final user should actually receive such um, content. And gaming, gamified solutions are for professionals to use with their clients or students or however you want to call them. Um, and it's not to replace them. So this is another really important aspect to, to uh, know. But this is what I want to, to kind of start the discussion of what actually games are. Uh, because Finland has been very uh, successful with the edtech side of things and gamification, serious games, and so on. And you can find a lot of information actually on data from, from Finnish and even in, within the EU kind of, because there's a lot of EU um, funded projects actually in, in this area. So there is a lot of data that one can actually uh, take and, and explore. And the reason why Finland has been so good is not really just the money. Um, it's not actually that easy here either to get the funding for, for uh, certain projects. But the reason why it was so successful is because professionals from different fields, let's go back to education. So if we think about teachers, they are super open, open-minded to actually try things out, work together with developers, figure out stuff together, because that is the thing what really makes the gamification work. That means that literally everyone works together from the expertise in their field. So it's not enough to have a teacher, it's not enough to have a designer, but they together with all other 
narrative designers, artists, audio, like audio designers, everyone has to be on the same page and work together as a whole, even that they not necessarily know each other's obviously expertise in the sense that they are experts in their fields. But this is where a lot of listening and a lot of um, um, co-creation kind of practices take place, which is not easy, especially for someone who does not know anything about the other person's field. But this is where the trust in their expertise is crucial and listening and testing, testing all the time. Um, but one of the good things about the gamification, actually, even that it sounds like, okay, it might be kind of how many people there are and it might be actually super expensive. To, but in the long run, it's not. It's actually really cheap and very effective to create certain uh, gamified solution that can be then available globally, if not just for a specific uh, region because of languages and so on. I mean, this is now the depending on what kind of strategy for the product you have. But there is a global uh, impact and it's very easy and fast to kind of get it and, and alter it and pivot and fix it up and adjust it according to the special needs of different users around the world. Um, especially we can see like one of the reasons why mobile games are so successful is exactly with that. How do you actually different cultures, different uh, approaches, different, you know, every single kind of like various markets with the same game in a way uh you you actually have a success like rovio was always mentioned supercell games and so on um because of that how you actually make it that as a design fits different kind of cultures and needs and so on and so on but that's a completely separate lecture of its own uh but yeah when it comes to gamification once again and besides this sort of uh, list here that I put from the higher user engagement, uh, very rewarding for the person who is uh, using it and so on. But self-governed motivation and learning is the crucial thing. Because if the person finds that gamified tool boring, they're not going to use it. And it doesn't matter how many teachers or, or therapist or whoever is forcing someone to do, they will maybe do it, but they are not going really to engage with it. So therefore, it's really important to, to focus on the design. And that design work and the professionals in the field that uh, depending on what, let's say, teacher has the final aim for the students to, to learn, that's where designer figures out how to really, in which way, um, introduce certain aspects, but also how to engage with a, a, a player with the specific parts there that it really feels as a full experience, not just facts given or, or answered like, like in quizzes. And this is where we have quite many unsuccessful uh, gamified solutions. And this is where we believe, at least in my team, and I am a strong believer that interactive storytelling is something that can, and stories in general, are something that can help us a lot, especially in breaking that stigma over, you know, educational, healthcare, or any other kind of gamified or serious games kind of thing. Because as long as you have uh, uh, really um, content that really ref reflects to the user, which games have in general, um, this is where where the kind of I think the key lays for for uh, looking forward. Uh, because one thing to have in mind is that what actually final player always needs to know or needs to know answers to these at least questions is that no matter are you in the beginning of the game in the middle or at the final boss or whatever you're doing it doesn't matter but you always have to be aware of okay where am i like literally in the game what am i doing what am i supposed to do is this challenge ahead of me too hard or is it or can I handle it uh, do I miss something do I need to go collect do I need to level up do I need to so all this information when it comes to can I actually succeed in that challenge is um, essential because this is what information the player needs to get from the game at all times um, and another thing to really uh, have in mind is that expectations of the player because if you are, let's say, searching for a game that you wish to play as a gamer, like you, you, you want to play some new game and you're checking what's available out there. 
So if I see, okay, there is a shooter game and I want to play the shooter game, I'm already having expectation of what kind of game I'm looking for. So this is another thing. If you are, uh, how you present and kind of like what kind of target audience are you really targeting with? And this is especially important for gamification is this sort of to understand what expectations pre from previous experience uh, people may have. Because this is very much over overlooked in the gamified uh, uh, solutions. While in games, we always think of the kind of like players' expectations kind of first uh, compared to, because gamification can be ran by, let's say, you know, client wants this and that, or let's say teachers or therapists, they want this and that, and you follow the therapist, but you don't even necessarily at that point even think, and I'm talking about in the kind of how you shouldn't do it. <laughs> um, the, the player is kind of the last thing you think about. It's not the case. You always have to think first of the player, always. Because at the end of the day, even if teachers cannot play the game, the, the, the actual students should play it. So that's your target audience. And the teachers need to understand what actually happens and how happens, even if they're not necessarily are good gamers and can't necessarily play it, but that's okay. They also need to understand that what actually their, like the target really audience is. Um, and now, what does that actually mean in practice? So if we are trying to now put the game development practices with this sort of other, other um, um, whole, let's say, um, industry needs or, or professionals' personal needs in their work and so on. Um, well, first of all, creating this immersive and emotionally engaging experience is one thing. But it's also really important to uh, that story res and story. We're not ever talking about people don't read necessarily, especially not in games. So uh, and not in mobile games. <laughs> that's that's for certain. So through visual storytelling and through this sort of visual cues, you are creating that interactive experience and everything else that you actually need to uh, pr pr you know, really uh, get interest of of the player. And that, especially for the uh, professionals in whichever field they are and they want to have gamified solution, a uh, really important part is to create the safe and controlled environment to try new things. Because in the, for example, therapy sessions and so on, you would have um, a therapist who can also adjust different kinds of things for their client to use. So that means that you can also gather a lot of different data, you can use it for your research, you can do a lot of different things through the game, while the player plays the game, but you can do a lot of different stuff, obviously. So creating this controlled environment, especially for the professionals in different fields is crucial. And, um, and yeah, creating this sort of safe place where you can actually try stuff is, is really important. Because this is at least in Finland, what has been really popular are VR solutions. And even though VR, in my opinion, is far from the, uh, let's say, device that would be available for the mortals, it's mostly for the companies or for the, let's say, developers who have it at home and so on. But basically VR is used heavily in Finland for various kinds of, of, of already for various uh, uh, educational, and, uh, and therapy uses, and, and also, for example, in um, virtual uh, presentations, like let's say uh, for the architects' buildings, uh, I already said, said about safety training and so on. So VR is definitely um, growing in that sense, but it's not yet as a B2C, it's still B2B mainly. So please have that in mind uh, when you are uh, uh, discussing that. And, um, and yeah, uh, when it comes to um, uh, why, why to gamify in the, in the first place, well, creating this type of uh, immersive experience through gaming technology, no matter what technology you, you decide, I mean, it can be even web-based. It doesn't have to be mobile or console or VR or any. It can be literally as simple as a web application. Um, it gives more than traditional practices in a way that you can actually use 
different senses and different parts of your brain basically to interact with the, that uh, particular content that you want your user to 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 interact with and this has been really successful uh, in western countries when it comes to helping children uh, youth and people of all ages with various kinds of uh, physical or mental challenges and so on so, so and, and trauma and whatnot so these are the things that really to have in mind that there is a lot of potential and as already uh, previously explained like there is um, you know sky is far from the limit <laughs> especially with the virtual reality you can do so much uh, in so many ways but these are some of the examples where you can actually really get not just this sort of like you can also tackle uh, person's social uh, aspects and social kind of engagement with other players, but also with other, whichever things you want to focus on, again, depending on your uh, gamified solution. So, so here are some of the uh, things you can actually uh, affect on, like assertiveness, confidence, um, developing relationships, uh, empathy, soft skills as well. Um, problem solving skills, um, trust in others, but most importantly, trust in self, because this is again, how do you actually deal with, for example, failure. So trusting yourself that you can do and you can do better and go for it. So this is, this is really important. And just to give briefly some of the biggest challenges that I would kind of like uh, want to just give few examples of the, there are lots of them actually, but just some of the main ones is, as I mentioned for with the teachers, really understanding who are your target users and who are, for example, facilitators, because teachers and your clients kind of who need that for their users, they're facilitators basically of that uh, platform. But you need to really, there is this sort of um, really uh, hard kind of, or, or thin line really understanding to, for whom you are actually creating the the, um, the solution. And uh, also, especially in the story-driven experience, it's really important that user should always have this sort of focus of what really needs to be done and not to get distracted. Uh, because this is also another thing that can be really hard, kind of like from all the things that you have happening around, what is actually important, what is not? When do you have a story bit when you don't? And balancing these parts, this is designer's job, basically to, to really work uh, uh, closely with. And then creating this sort of bond with the user because uh, bigger bond there is, more engagement also on this learning and, and other aspects that you actually through gamification want to um, assert is exactly uh, what, you, what you want to also see, what works with what kind of people. And big challenge is also understanding where money comes from, because there is the B2B side and then there is B2Z kind of business model. So depending on the product and in what capacity, it makes sense to go with the one, other or both actually business models, because that's also possible. So but this is something that is also quite misunderstood, kind of like how you can actually make money out of the gamified solutions. Um, so please have that in mind, like really do your research well. And one thing that ever, very often happens in gamified solutions is this, that you have, usually it's a client based thing that you are kind of um, uh, getting, uh, let's say, uh, certain, certain, let's say, um, uh, requirements from a client that they need for for their uh, gamified solution and this is one of the good examples of what it really means to create it because there's a lot of misunderstanding also of what again i said like who is actually the target audience and who is the facilitator and all that so very being very clear really what client needs or your partner in the project needs is that's where listening and con continuous communication happens because you don't want to go through this hell <laughs> in order to just get what you actually need. So listening, please don't forget that. And there is a second one, client expectations versus client budget. Because very often in gamified solutions, uh, the budgets are much smaller than in uh, um, actual game production in, in, um, in the market, I mean, as a commercial games. 
So be honest to your client, what is actually possible to do with the available budget and what if it, if it all works out, meaning on the market and so on, how you can actually improve and get there to this kind of final expectations that they are having, but to get there, not necessarily immediately, but what would be the steps to do there? Because it's your job to educate them what is possible in, with the game technology, what is possible with the, uh, this sort of game design in general. So you are the expert, educate your clients. And don't be afraid also to say no to a certain ideas because that's your job. You have to tell them how, how to, uh, because usually clients have no clue what they want or what they need, especially when it comes to gamification. Um, and now I would like to give you some examples of some of the, just some of the gamified solutions that we have done at MyTail. Um, so here is one uh, that we have done for Viking Line. So Viking Line, for those who don't know, is they are the cruising, cruising ships and uh, generally uh, like company from Finland, uh, which does cruising, but also different kind of, um, uh, let's say, uh, transportation in, in a sense of goods and so on. And this, what you see here is not a photograph. This is the 3D model that we have been developing uh, VR and visualization solutions for them. Uh, it has been built in China. And while it was built in China, we had been building the virtual version of the ship, which then have been used for promotional material um, VR training of the staff solution and so on. So you can use this kind of uh, approach to actually do it for like very Swiss for both sales and for actually uh, teams needs within the staff members. And just to clarify everything that you see here from these 3D models is done with Blender and Blender is free software to use. So there is as as Chris said, education and being kind of like learning new skills, learning all that. So this is all done in Blender, which you can download today and just <laughs> do it yourself. So no, no special magic or special expensive stuff. Everything has done here with the free software. Um, and here's another just example to give you kind of like what if for architects or for because in Finland, this kind of having a cottage is very, very popular. So, for example, using AR uh, to actually see where your cottage would be in the actual land that you own, or how you can check different kind of buildings and their uh, structure or architects before they are even built. So this is one of the things we have been developing. And then for different clients, we have been developing different kinds of, um, this is for the uh, emotional fitness game for one of the clients of the, from UK, Equal. Um, and then um, uh, this is one of our products. Uh, we have been creating educational games also as a mobile free to play uh, games for where you, besides taking care of your pets uh, as, or, or your friends, you also have to take care of their uh, mental well-being and educa educating them, learning new skills as well as uh, other needs as a, as a kind of Tamagotchi part. And here is another where uh, we have been creating um, tools for speech and language therapy. And here is one of the interactive calendars uh, for uh, children and families with uh, uh, speech and language uh, imperative where they basically use mostly visual uh, stimuluses for communicating. And this is available in 25 languages. Uh, so just saying like this is, there are different things we have been developing for different needs of our clients, but also in our own. So this is our own product for speech and language therapy. Um, so yeah, I gave a lot of information today and I'm sure that there will be quite many questions, but as a summary to kind of like put down uh, to really what, what matters in, in, in gamification. Uh, make sure that you experiment as much as you can. And the reason behind that is that you actually see what works for your final user. So always user centric approach and get them involved as soon as you can in testing. As soon as you have anything on the screen moving, get them there, get the feedback, work with them fast and testing fast is crucial. Um, at the end of the day, 
stories and also generally kind of users, I mean, as a players, they are the creators of the fantasy. And we as developers, we create just a building box for them. So don't forget that. Make sure that you let them explore and learn things on their own way. And listening, nothing without listening, listening to your team, to yourself, you know, to your gut feeling, but also listening your uh, fellow co-creators, your clients, your users, and so on. So it's it's really important. The, so, the soft skills are crucial when it comes to this industry, actually, how to make the most out of uh, the, uh, the final product, because again, for example, we don't know anything about certain topics or listening uh, that and also from our side making sure that they understand what is technically possible and what kind of design solution would be the best fit for their needs. So yes, listening, very, very important. And yes, that would be all from me for today when it comes to the talk. Um, obviously, I'm available for any kind of questions and comments now, but also feel free to be in touch later on as well. And I'm hoping to be in more of these events that we can continue discussions further. Music